of the well of salvation from this inexhaustible well of blessing that promises us abundance and sufficiency. Your soul, your mind, your heart must delight itself in the provision of God. In that fatness that the Lord himself has promised. In verse 3, incline your ear. You see, when you are hearing the word of God, and you are expecting that your need will be supplied, you need to pay attention, incline your ear. Because you know, sometimes the word of God is going on. It may be when something is said that will profit you, that will bring your healing, that will bring your deliverance, that will bring your joy and the fulfillment of all your expectation. It may be at that time your mind, your ear, your heart is diverted to another thing. That's why it says, incline your ear and come unto me here and your soul shall live. Your soul will live in Jesus' name. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you. Even the show mercies of David. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and commander to the people. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not. That promise is given to Christ the Savior. Christ the Lord, that even where they had not known the Lord before, this retreat during this time, many people will come to know the Lord. Families that had not known the Lord before, during this time, these families, they will know the Lord in Jesus' name. And those who have known the Lord, but who have not known Him, in a very much extended experience, this time, you'll know the Lord in a new way. In verse 5, Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God. And for the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified thee. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. The blessings of God are for those who seek the Lord. That's why the Lord started with you being thirsty, and you being hungry, and you being desirous. And then, if you're thirsty and hungry and expectant and desirous, you'll be seeking the Lord for what you need in your life. Seek ye the Lord. While he may be found, call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way. That's the only hindrance. And we're going to take all hindrances out of the way. I said we're going to take all hindrances out of the way. Sin is a hindrance. We'll take it out of the way. Wickedness is a, is a hindrance. We're going to take that out of the way. Idol worship is an hindrance. We're going to take it out of the way. Evil is a hindrance. We're going to take it out of the way in Jesus' name. Let the wicked forsake his way. And your righteous man is thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. He will abundantly pardon. He's telling us that God is not stingy with his pardon. His forgiveness or his mercy. He pardons. He forgives. He shows mercy abundantly. That abundant pardon will come to you in Jesus' name. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither I ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher, as, 
so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts whatever you seek whatever limitation or blessing you're expecting god says it goes beyond every expectation that you have his word promises you more than you can ever desire his thoughts towards you they are so great and so expansive that there will be no limitation in what you get during this retreat in Jesus' name. Verse 10, for as the rain cometh now, it will come upon you. And the snow from heaven that you will come, and returneth not either, watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and porch, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater provision for those who are poor bread to the eater satisfaction to those who are dissatisfied healing for those who are sick every blessing for those who have any lack any need in their lives it will come upon your life in jesus name so in verse 11 shall my word be that goes out of my mouth it shall not return unto me void every word you hear watch a promise every word of proclamation every word of prophecy that you hear everything will be fulfilled in your life jesus name he says so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. Hold on to that in your heart. Whatever God desires, whatever God pleases, whatever God determines, and whatever God has ordained, it will be done for you during this retreat. It shall not return voyage, it must fulfill that which I please, and it shall prosper in the same whereto I send it. Verse 12 For ye shall go out with joy. When we finish this retreat on Saturday, by the grace of God, you'll be going out with joy. You'll be going out singing unto the Lord. You'll be going out with testimonies in Jesus' name. For you shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the sun shall come up the fir tree. And instead of the briar shall come up the mature tree. And it shall be to the Lord for a name for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. The blessings you are going to receive will be permanent in Jesus' name. That's why the Lord is inviting everyone that you come. You come with assurance. You come with expectation. And you come with joy, wanting to draw the water of blessing out of this inexhaustible well of heaven. We're going to divide the message to three parts. Number one, drawing from the fullness of heaven's inexhaustible well. Drawing from the fullness of heaven's inexhaustible well. Number two, drinking with faith. When you draw it out, you need to drink it. What's the use drawing it and not drinking it? Drinking with faith from heaven's inexhaustible water. Drinking with faith from heaven's inexhaustible water. And then, number three, declaring with faithfulness heaven's infallible word. Declaring 
with faithfulness. Heaven's infallible word. This word will not fail. I said the word will not fail. As it comes to you, you are going to find that out in your life. It will do wonders in your life in Jesus' name. Number one, drawing from the fullness of heaven's inexhaustible well. We're looking at Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15. And we're reading there from verse 23. Exodus 15, 23. And when they came to Mara, they could not drink of the waters of Mara, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of each was called Mara. The children of Israel were journeying from Egypt to the land of Canaan, the land of promise. And the Lord had told them, it's a land flowing with milk and honey that they were going to have the abundance of the provision of heaven upon them. And the only description God could tell them for them to understand what kind of land that will be and what kind of provision they will have is to tell them that the land will be flowing with milk and honey. Now they want the way. As they were on the way, they came to a spot where they needed to drink water. But there was no water for them. And so what they found was Mara, a kind of water that was poisonous, bitter, undrinkable for them. And so what were they to do? Every problem has a solution. Every difficulty has a resolution. Every conflict has a resolution. The Lord will bring every problem in your life to a stop in Jesus' name. This is the problem they had. It was a problem for every individual there, every family there, and for the whole congregation. And now they wondered, what are we going to drink if the journey is like this? What shall we do? And the people murmured against Moses saying, what shall we drink? You will not murmur, you will pray. You will not complain, you will pray. You will not criticize, you will pray. You will not condemn, you will pray. For them, they murmur, they grumble, they complain. We will not, all will do during this retreat, whatever need we have. Whatever problems tear us in the face. We are not going to murmur. Give me a good amen. We are not going to grumble. Give me a good amen. We are not going to complain. Another amen. And we are not going to criticize anybody anytime during this retreat. Another amen. We will pray. And God will answer your prayer. He has answered that prayer already in Jesus' name. And he cried unto the Lord. And the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. Everything bitter in your life will be made sweet. Peter family will become sweet family. Children that give you sorrow and heartache, they'll bring joy to your life. Any situation in your life that has become bitter like Mara, everything will be sweetened and blessed in Jesus' name. A miraculous change is coming your way. A miraculous transformation is coming your way. A miraculous touch of the Lord is coming your way. There is a tree from Calvary on which Jesus Christ was crucified. And when that cross of Jesus Christ comes into your life and comes into a situation, everything will be turned around. From this very night, that death of Jesus, the crucifixion of Jesus, the cross of Jesus Christ will turn every bitter sin in your life into sweetness in Jesus' name.
are coming back to verse 25 and he cried unto the Lord and the Lord showed him a tree which when he had cast into the waters the waters were made sweet there he made for them a statute and an ordinance and there he proved them the same thing he has done for them the same thing he will do for you and for us in numbers chapter 21 numbers chapter 21 you see that the children of Israel they saw water they could not drink but God turned everything that was bitter he turned it to become sweet and God says I am God I change not it will not change in your life Numbers 21 I'm reading from verse 16 and verse 17 Numbers 21 verse 16 and from thence they went to beer that is the well whereof the Lord spake unto Moses gather the people together and I will give them water the Lord said, gather the people together, and I will give them water. That's the commandment the Lord has given us, has given our leaders, has given our overseers, has given our group coordinators and coordinators. And he says, gather the people together, and the Lord gave us assurance, he will give you all the supply that you need in your life. He told Moses, he said, this is a wilderness. And this is a place of scarcity and need. All the same, even though humanly speaking, it appears there is nothing to meet the needs of the people. Look around you. Humanly speaking, you might see the need. You might see the difficulty. You might see the challenges. But the Lord has told us to gather the people together. And has given us a promise that he will give us abundance from heaven. Can man be more faithful than God? Can man be more dutiful than God? See what our leaders have done. They have obeyed God. They have gathered us together. But God is greater than man. I said God is greater than man. If our leaders, our workers, our members have been faithful and we have gathered together in the name of the Lord, how much more will God be more faithful? How much more will God keep his promise? It's a covenant keeping God and it says gather the people together if you will do your part. The Almighty God says I will do my part. Oh Lord we've done our part. Our leaders and workers and members have done their part. It's now your turn and God is assuring us from tonight he will do his part. Are you sick? Tonight you are healed. You are a sinner? Today salvation is coming your way. You are poor? Prosperity is coming your way tonight. You have need necessities in your life. Tonight your needs are being supplied in Jesus' name. The faithful God said, I will, I will, I will. And when God says, I will, Nothing will hinder God and nothing will hinder your blessing tonight in Jesus' name. I will give them, I will give them water. In verse 17, Then Israel sang the song, Spring up, O well, sing ye unto it. Spring up, O well. The Lord is telling us, we give a word of command, spring up, O oh well, and the water will spring forth. And the blessing will spring forth. And the healing will spring forth. And the power will spring forth. And the provision will spring forth. And the miracle will spring forth in Jesus' name. He tells us in Psalm 84. Psalm 84. We see the well of God's heavens inexhaustible well. And then he tells us, come and draw out of that fullness. Come and draw out of that abundance. Come and draw out of that provision. In Psalm 84. 
I'm reading from verse 4. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. That's for me. I said that's for me. Dwelling in the house of the Lord. Stay for the people of God. Accepting our place in the fold, in the flock of the people of God. It brings blessing upon our lives. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They will still be praising thee. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee. Your strength is in the Lord. I said your strength is in the Lord. And while the word of God is coming to you tonight, your weakness is being turned to strength. Your sickness is going away. Your infirmity is vanishing. Your doubts are melting away. Impossibilities are running away from your life. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, who in whose heart are the ways of them, who passing through the valley of Baker make it a well. The rain also fills the pools. They go from strength to strength. I thought you'll say amen. amen. Go from grace to grace, from glory to glory. From face to face, from one level of power to a higher level of power, going from strength to strength, every one of them, how many? Every one of them, how many? Are you excluded? Are you there? Are you part of the everyone? Are you going to be blessed tonight? Is God going to answer your prayer? Yeah. Is, going, is God going to do wonders in your life? Yeah. Every one of them in strength, in Zion, appeareth before God. Now in verse 11, verse 11. In verse 11, for the Lord God is a sun. That sun will shine in your life. Yeah. And a shield that will protect you. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Nothing will be withheld from you in Jesus' name. John chapter 4. In John chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 14. John chapter 4 verse 14. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him. The Lord is saying, I shall give him. I shall give her. It's coming my way. And it's coming your way. If you will drink of that which the Lord will give tonight, it will not pass you by. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. That means the satisfaction the Lord will give you in this retreat will be a lifetime satisfaction. And you are satisfied today and tomorrow and next week and next month and next year for the rest of your life. Whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing.